What's your relationship like with Stephen Harper these days? It was a little rough when uh, when you were the leader. Well, uh, most of, whatever I influence I've had on Stephen was more when he was e younger. Like he he was a graduate student at the University of Calgary when we first recruited him as our policy chief, mainly because we couldn't afford to pay anybody. <laughs> <laughs> graduate students could be exploited, but uh, he he uh, joined us. Uh, uh, then I, th I think whatever influence I had on him was more in those years. I'm mean, still in contact with him, but uh, for, for I think my influence was in those early days. Well, it's just interesting. I mean, he he's so different than you, and it seems like you've sort of you've ascribed to his idea of you've got to be a little bit of a control freak in terms of controlling a message. It sounds like there's certain lessons on that. Well, I think I can un uh, understand how one would get more like that, particularly if one w went through the reform experience. Stephen was never happy with the degree of freedom we gave our members because they got us into trouble. They got us into uh, a lot of trouble. And then they say the minority government situation, which was entirely different, and which I was not a part of, was was different. But you're a grassroots guy. Is he taking oh, it yeah, too yeah. far? Oh yeah, no, I, I, and I, I, I like people, and I think you can handle. I think you can have big open public meetings. And sure, dem um, democracy's messy, and people say things that are inappropriate, but I, I think there's ways and means of handling that and, and uh, openness that then to avoid them by restricting openness. Hmm. I, I'm trying to get a sense from you. You're still so much in touch with the, the conservative base through your, the Manning Center and so on. Do you get the sense that the base is content? Well, I, I think they're, on, they're content on some issues. I think they feel that the government's on the right track with respect to the economy, which according to the polls is the number one issue in all parts of the country and uh, virtually with every interest group. But I, I do think they have worries on the democratic front. I think a lot of the younger people would like to see a more positive, proactive approach on the environmental front. So there's, there's work to be done on, on other areas, even though those areas may not be the number one issue that the pollsters draw attention to. Have you watched House of Cards? For those of us climbing to the top of the food chain, there can be no mercy. The cynical, the cynicism and the, and the tricks people play, I mean, it may make for good fictional television, but uh, there's enough cynicism and mistrust of these institutions as it is without uh, adding to it. And, and the Canadian system is significantly different than the American one, too. It's also, you know, the advertising that we see, the way they go after each other these days, it's... Uh... Well, and that's a worrisome thing. I, I've heard, I've had these folks that uh, sell the negative advertising thing, and everybody says they don't like it, and I, I, I don't like it, but they will come into you and say, the only thing is, it works. Justin Trudeau, he's in way over his head. So do you teach that? Do you have to teach? No, no we... We try to teach how do you c cope with it. But you're, the party that came after you was probably the, 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 the most successful in those kinds of ads. Well, now, they learned it? it all from the Liberals before. I mean, that's the trouble with it. It's like, it's like uh, tribal warfare. This tribe does it to that tribe, and that tribe does it back. Uh, does it bother you? Well, yeah, I, because it it, it is... Uh, Creating this uh, cynicism and disillusionment among the the public that they it's it's making it harder and harder to recruit candidates. Well, now Justin Trudeau, he's way up in the polls. It's yeah. uh, how do you explain that? Well, uh, but I think his challenge will be what, when he espouses those values. Uh, uh, when Harper espouses them, he can at least point to a track record of doing it. When Justin points to it, it's all promises and what I would do, but it's not a track record. So the, I, I think there will be a debate too in this next election on on. Uh, and probably more among the media on, on charisma versus substance. Everyone say hi to Sophie. You know, if, what if you have substance but you don't have charisma? Can you make it uh, politically? What if all you've got is charisma and no substance? Can you make it that way? I think. What are you suggesting? <laughs> well, uh, I think there's a lot more charisma on one side than the other and a lot more substance on the other. Of course, the, ch the challenge is to get a, maybe a mix of both. When you were running for office, we used to hear a lot about how the West wants in. People want a major constitutional change to uh, strengthen regional representation in the parliament. Is the West in? Yes, and I, I think almost more importantly that uh, on May 2nd, 2011, the geopolitical foundations of the country shifted from the old 
Laurentian region of Ontario and Quebec as an alliance to a new alignment between Ontario and the West. And, uh, uh, so the balance of power shift? The ba balance of power shift, yeah. And I don't see the Liberals and NDP responding to that yet. Both of them now are Quebec-based parties. The uh, NDP vacated the West just at the time the West was becoming this big <laughs> player. It, and, and reform filled the, that uh, vacuum. So uh, uh, I think the new reality is this political alignment between Ontario and the, uh, uh, and the West. And now Quebec is talking about separation again, or one party is. Well, we, we're saying that now we're going to have to cope with Eastern alienation. And now I'm going to have to, maybe we could suggest a party that would campaign on the East once. <laughs> But it is interesting, though. Like I have raised this in in the, in the West that this is this new alignment, uh, and that we have to be conscious of of everything east of the Ottawa River feeling more and more uh, out of it. And it's interesting. That's with, quite a change. Well, it's interesting with Western audiences. Some, some people you might say will say, well, it's about time they felt what it's like to be out of your own country. But whenever someone expresses that in audience, I say, but you know, you remember what it was like for you. Do you want anybody else in this country to feel that way? Uh, I, I don't think so. And again, your public audience will just say, no. You know, the West remembers what it's like to feel impotent within your own country politically, and 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 most Westerners don't want that to be the experience of Atlantic Canada or Quebec or any other part of the country. It's been uh, eight years of a conservative government. Has, uh, has Canada become more conservative? Well, our, uh, we, we do these national public opinion polls every year in which we try to ascertain what are the values and principles that Canadians uh, hold to. And, and certainly on the economy, this idea that you've got to balance your budgets, that you've got to constrain your spending, that you should leave more money in the pockets of taxpayers to spend instead of putting it in the hands of bureaucrats or politicians. Certainly there's widespread strong support uh, for that. Now what one of the challenges politically is that th those values have become so widespread, as they were not in the 90s when we started out, that people don't necessarily connect them to conservative <laughs> parties. You're so, not getting the credit. <laughs> so, well, yeah, so, and in a way that's what happened to the Liberals in many respects too. Some of the things that the Liberals espoused, like fairness and equality, which were kind of packaged originally as these are liberal values in, in the end after. But isn't that victory really if you can well, get other well, people in, to in say the broadest, it was their idea? In the broadest sense it is, in the broadest sense it is, but politically then it creates the challenge of y yes there's all kinds of people supposedly subscribe to the values that you think are conservative but doesn't automatically translate into support for. Somebody else then uh, goes on uh, and wins. Well they, they, they could. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank well, you. Well to talk to you. Wendy.